Hi guys, welcome to our new show, Young Geniuses. In today's episode, we're going to talk about the Regeneron International Scientific Engineering Fair, which is the largest international pre-college science fair, with over 1,800 students participating in the final round from over 75 different countries. In the category of behavioral and social sciences, we have Holy Mary Zeher, who won fourth place. So, tell us about yourself. Hi, um, I'm Holy Mary and I'm 18 years old. I go to church in St. Abraham, Long Island, New York, and now I'm in college. Now I go to U Albany um, in a BSMD program with SUNY Upstate Medical University. And it's such an honor to be here with you. So you won fourth place out of the whole world, and that's a big achievement. So tell us, how, how'd you reach that? How'd you start, like, just the whole experiment? Like, how was it? Yeah, so in school, there was a research program and I was a part of it starting from 10th and 11th grade and usually in 11th grade towards the end you're supposed to be looking for mentors from a variety of different universities local universities so that you can work in a lab there and so I got a lab at Stony Brook University um, and it's called the Critter Lab and there their focus was Parkinson's disease which was perfect for me because I knew I wanted to be a doctor and so it was health related and it was just perfect overall um, so I would go actually all throughout the summer both like two months that we have off, um, from Monday to Friday, 9 to 5 p.m., working on the project. And since they dealt with Parkinson's disease, they were trying to look at memory loss. And so they had rat models uh, who had Parkinson's disease and were giving them different tests, trying to see if they had short-term memory loss or if they had long-term memory loss. And over the end of the summer, we found that at 12 and a half months of age, they did have short-term memory loss, but not long-term memory loss. And so that was a, a big thing to discover. And so my point was, okay, why do they have that? Why do they only have short-term memory loss, but not long-term? And how can we figure this out? So after that, I decided to look at peroxisomes. And now peroxisomes are a specific organelle within each cell. And they're involved in breaking down bad components in cells called reactive oxygen species that causes Parkinson's disease. So if you have good peroxisomes, they're supposed to break down this bad ROS and that's supposed to, you know, not let you have Parkinson's disease. And so I was, okay, maybe peroxisome levels in areas of the brain associated with short-term memory loss are low compared to maybe the long-term areas, long-term memory areas, if that makes sense. Um, and so that was my project. I would go in and we had, I would stain the brains and try to measure the quantity and quantify how much peroxisomes were in each area of the brain that I had picked out um, and see if they had a correlation with Parkinson's disease. Okay, so that's all really impressive. So can you tell us more about Parkinson's disease and its like symptoms and side effects? Yeah, so Parkinson's disease affects over 10 million people globally and it's a really debilitating disease. It causes um, tachycardia, it causes rigidity in your muscles, Patients have trouble like initiating movements, they have tremors, and other neurological um, and cognitive impairments like memory loss and things like that. And so if you have this disease, it's really hard for you to do your basic things like walking, brushing your teeth, eating, things like that, and it's just really bad to have overall. So let's move from that and tell us, like we're here for you, so tell us more about how did you feel during the experiment? Like I know you were in Dallas, right? Did it feel like different to be in a new place and a new environment? So Dallas was actually where the international fair was held, like that last level. And that was after a long, long year of um, very various rounds and things that I had to go through to get to that level. And so when I got to Dallas, I was really, really nervous. Like I could not believe that I was, you know, traveling and getting a whole week off from school, of course, and everything to go and present work that I had thought didn't have any meaning or didn't matter at all. And so it was a really like transforming experience. And then when I got there, I was really nervous because the judges who were supposed to judge you, like a lot of them were Nobel laureates. They're very big scientists who know what they're doing. And I, what am I? Who am I? I'm a little girl who just dabbled in this experience, made her own experiment, and now she's here. And so if I mess up, they're going to see through me. They know what they're doing. I'm not as experienced, I'm not an expert. So that weekend that I arrived, I really had to pound out my presentation. I had a whole poster board and my research teacher was with me and we'd do various run throughs. We'd start, like we'd wake up, she's like, okay, at breakfast, she's like, okay, Mary, um, tell me about this. And I have to answer right away, what, what's Parkinson's disease or why peroxisomes or why 
um, these areas of the brain and then we do run throughs and I reached a point where sometimes my brain would shut off and be like okay start over and I'm reading my I'm not reading I'm like reciting my title I'm saying my title and I mess up at my name I forgot to say like Holy Mary Zaher for example I say just Holy Mary and she's like okay restart so it became like a recording like I'm like recording something every couple of seconds like I restart and it was um, really really annoying at some times but at the end I got it down with a lot of hard work and perseverance and the grace of God and I went in that day I felt ready I'm gonna present the best that I have and whatever happens happens so so what were like the obstacles you had to face other than like the repetition and the nervousness like anything more personal um at the experiment or in general at the experiment about it like the whole or like I meant at the competition or in general anything anything everything so there were a lot of obstacles throughout the way. Like the biggest thing that I could recall right now was just to find the lab to be able to do work I want to do in. So as I said earlier, in 11th grade, we were supposed to go around and send emails to a bunch of professors and see um, if they had openings in their labs and if we could work with them over the summer. But the thing is, these professors are really busy. So I emailed about like 40 different professors be like, hey, my name is Holy Mary Zahir. I love what you're doing. It's so amazing, so cool. I actually had a question about this study. What do you mean by this? Or what are you doing about that? And I had to hook them in that way and show them that I was interested. And then they're supposed to respond, be like, yeah, this is my answer to the question. Then I'm supposed to hit them with like, oh, that's beautiful. Like, I'm so interested in your work. Can I work in your lab over the summer? Um, but for because they're so busy or because they're, they don't have any more openings in their labs or things like that, I was turned down. Some people didn't even respond to me um, and the time was ticking. I needed to find a lab before the end of the school year. And so I went home, I cried, I told mama like, look mama, research isn't for me. Um, no one's answering me, no one's giving me the light of day. I should just go home, it'll, it'll be fine. And she's like, no, like you should keep going. And my brother too, Richard, he would keep pushing me like, no, you should follow what you want to do. And so I ended up printing resumes, my resumes, and I'd go up to Stony Brook University. It was like 10, 15 minutes away. And I'd knock on each door and be like, hey, um, I, my name is Holy Mary. I'm a rising senior in high school. I read about you online and I love what you're doing. Do you have five, 10 minutes to talk? And I would talk with them and I'd go to every lab, knock like, hey, do you have five minutes of your time to spare? And it was rough because like, I'd have to knock and maybe they weren't there, they didn't have any lab openings or they weren't interested. And so again, can I, like the doors were being closed right in my face. And so I was looking at the directory and I was trying to figure out which floor I was going to. Of course, very sad, very angry, like what am I doing? This is such a waste of time, like I'm not finding a mentor. And I'm struggling at the directory trying to find one professor I was looking for and this lady, she comes up to me, she's like, oh, can I help you? And I'm like, yeah, I'm looking for so-and-so and I'm a rising senior um, trying to look for a lab and things. And she's like, oh, you're a rising senior? Oh, that's so cool and whatnot. I, my name is Mary Kritzer and it's so nice to meet you. And I was like, hold on, Mary Kritzer? Like, I emailed you a couple of months ago. And she's like, oh, really? I was like, yeah, and I'm, I'm a rising senior. I'm very interested in your lab. I love what you do with Parkinson's disease. And I was wondering if you had a couple of minutes to talk. And she's like, well, that's so cool that I, that I met you or that I bumped into you. Like, a lot of times professors would, or scientists would see the emails and choose not to respond. And they want to see if you're persistent. Yeah. You have to go back and email them again or go up and knock to them. And she's like, that's so cool. Like here now that you met, okay. And now I know you really want to do this. We can be up on this day or whatever. Um, and that's how it started. That's how I, that's how I got the lab. But it was a long process and it's a lot of hard work. Yeah. My research teacher was like lighting the ball on fire. She's like, okay, if you don't have a mentor, then there's no point of you being in the program because that's what you're supposed to do senior year. So it was really, Tough time. So how did you feel when you when you won, when they called your name and you won this big award out of like the whole world? Like that's so big. Yeah, so it was actually the big ballroom in the convention center that we were at. And I was sitting like somewhere in the middle back with my friends and it's a long list match in every category and they have multiple winners like one through four and from different countries and for them to go up. So the tension was really building. But at that point I was like, okay, I did my part. I like whatever happens, happens. I wasn't expecting on winning. I wasn't expecting on anything. I was just actually encouraging my friends or being supportive of them. Like, it's okay. Like you're doing so good. We'll see like if you're, if you're going to win, that's great. If not, you did the best that you could. You're good. I'm trying to console my friends I'm not worried about myself I didn't think I was gonna win and I didn't really care and then all of a sudden they get to my 
to my category and they're like there's this automated lady I don't know who's saying it in the back or something and they go in the category of behavioral and social sciences in fourth place holy like they said one two three that holy Mary is there and I was like and that all of a sudden I found myself getting up from my chair it's not like I'm the one doing this I feel like something like <laughs> someone's else controlling is my body yeah and all of a sudden my legs are taking me up this long hallway that's never ending and then I ramp and then a lady who puts a, a medal around me I'm like and I feel like I'm watching this from third person it's not me who's walking up there it's not Holy Mary it's some other person who looks like me who is me um who's up on stage and so it was like a truly joyous moment. I was like, thank God, like I couldn't have done any of this through all that, throughout all the obstacles that I've been through. Like I couldn't have done anything without God. And so they went to the back, they had us go back. And then I immediately took out my phone and I sent, took a selfie with the little medal. I took a screenshot and I sent it to my mom and my brother and my family. And like, guys, I like, like we did it, we did it. And it was a pretty cool moment. That's beautiful. So thank you so much, Holy Mary. Thank you for having me. And we're gonna be back in the next episode.